Green Team Academy podcast, episode 44, my interview with Elena Magni, an eight-year-old in St. John, Virgin Island, who is raising awareness about plastic pollution. If you're ready to become an eco-leader in your community, then you're in the right place. I'm Joan Gregerson, and I work to help teams make a big impact fast. Don't forget to head over to greenteamacademy.com to get your very own Green Team Essentials. I put these together for you because this is exactly what I wished I had had when I was starting out. Join our fabulous community, download the free guide to 12 common but easily avoidable mistakes, and hop into our podcast discussion group. I can't wait to meet you there. And now, let's get started. Hey, 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 green team, what's up? I'm so excited that you're hanging out with me today because I don't know if you've ever visited St. John in the Virgin Islands, but that's what we're going to be doing today. And I'm so excited because my special guest today is Elena Magni, and Elena is eight years old, and she is my brother's granddaughter so that makes her my great niece and she's great in so so many ways <laughs> so um hi elena how are you doing Good. awesome that's so great well the reason that i asked elena to be on the podcast today was because i saw a video that she had done as a research project where she looked into plastic pollution and I learned a lot by by watching that video, and I thought that she would be a great person to talk to, so she's going to share a little bit of that. Um, but first, um, Lainey, do you want to tell us a little bit about where you live? Well, I live on an island called St. John. It's really, really small. There's a lot of beaches, and it's really pretty, and yeah. It really is pretty. It really is pretty. And I'm I'm going to record the video for this one. And so all you podcast listeners, I'll let you know if that comes out okay. And I'll include that in the show notes so you can see exactly. You can meet Elena in person kind of and uh, through the video. And you can see the beautiful view of the ocean right behind her. Okay, so um, Elena, how did you get interested in this issue of plastics in the ocean? Well, living on an island that's surrounded by water, you're just constantly hearing about these problems with the ocean. And this one I've been hearing about for a while, and it sounded really bad. So who did who did you who did you hear about it from? Like, how do you, what do you mean that you hear about it everywhere? Well, I've heard it from a lot of different places. I've, when I am just looking on the internet for things, I've seen it. And last year, my teacher got us to write something about it, like a paragraph or two about it, and in language, we're studying it, too. Okay, so you're hearing about it, but are you also seeing it yourself? Well, yes. Sometimes when I go to certain beaches, there I can see some plastic washed up on the shore, and, well... Not only plastic, but just a lot of trash washed up has been just broken down and washed up onto the shore. And yeah, it and makes, it makes me feel sad and angry too about the how the environment is like getting along. Mhm. Right. So you're in this beautiful spot with this beautiful beaches, but when you go there, sometimes there's just all this trash there. Yeah, so that makes sense that that would make you feel sad and angry. Okay. All right. So, um 
what did you what did you find out in your research and how did you how did you go about doing your research? Well, I found a lot of different things, really, really interesting facts that I have added in that video. And also I did my research a lot of different ways. I got some books from the library and read them. I looked on the internet. I did all sorts of things. Yeah, it was very well organized. And is that video something that, can I share the link to that so that other people can watch it? Of course. Okay. All right, terrific. So I will do that so that people can see your whole presentation. Um, but what do you think are some of the most important things that people should know about plastics, plastic pollution in the ocean? Well, it's just that it has to go somewhere. And usually it ends up in the garbage can, which ends up in the ocean, which ends up in fish and all the other things that eat fish and sea animals, and it just gets everywhere and it's hurting the environment. Wow, that was a very beautiful and concise way to say that. So you're, you're just kind of asking people to imagine themselves that when they buy a plastic water bottle and they throw it in the trash and they think that's the end of it, that what you just painted was the whole picture of, yeah, well, you think it's going somewhere specific, but it might well end up in the ocean. And then, as you said, in the fish and the things that eat fish, whether that's other fish or us and, and everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. And so what, what do you think that people can do to help? What would you advise? What would you advise someone who is also thinking like you are like, you know what, this is a problem. So what should I do? Well, anyone can start anywhere and it can be really small or really big, like, well, reusing things, buying used things instead of new things, um, and yeah. So when, when there is a choice, so you're saying just anytime you have a choice, to use plastic or something else to think about if there's some other way that you could do it so you don't avoid creating that plastic pollution at the beginning of the cycle. Yeah. That's a great idea. Okay. All right. Um, what would you tell people that really care about the earth, but they just, they feel like it, they don't even know where to start or it's just too big or, you know, maybe it's too depressing. Like you said, it just kind of, you know, I think a lot of people maybe just feel sad or angry and they really can't bear to think about it. What do you, well, what would you suggest? Well, like I said, anyone can start anywhere. And... So maybe if they just don't really, if they can't just really bear to think about it, maybe they should think of it as something else as, or, well, just do something small maybe, because small things can make big things happen. That's a good point. If everybody did a small thing then together it would be a big thing. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, is there any other last thing that we, that you wanted to say about plastic pollution before we um, go on to the next topic? Well, um, if 
like everybody helps, even if it's just really, really small, then, like I said, it's going to make a really big difference. And you should just keep helping. Even if it might be hard not to use plastic, you should still try to lower the amount that you use every day. That's a great tip. Start small, just be open-minded and curious. Maybe there's ways that you never even thought of that you could start eliminating plastic in your everyday. And as you said, if it's a daily thing, then that could be small. But if you do it every day, you change what you're doing every day. And then maybe other people see how you do it. So yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So then the the last thing, I don't know if you know about this, Elena, but when I was a little kid, I was very similar to you in that I really cared about the environment. And the first poem I wrote, I was 10 years old and it was about pollution. And so, you know, I was like really interested in the same kind of topics that you are. Um, but, you know, one thing that I didn't know was I, I just tried to do things by myself. So, Elena, is, is there anybody else that you think might want to work on this with you? Or, or what do you have as an idea for going forward? What do you think would be best? Well, like you said, starting a team, yeah. And I think once they hear about it, people will probably want to help because... I'm hoping they will realize that it is a really big problem. But I was going to ask you, where would you start with starting a green team? or And how would you do it? That's a great question. You're a great interviewer. <laughs> uh, well, here's one thing that I didn't know until more recently is that, do you know how many people that you need to start a team? No. Do you want to guess? Two. You and one more person. Because what, what happens is when it's just you and you really care about something, then you can feel a little bit crazy because you're like, hey, this thing is happening and you just keep talking about it. But if you find one other person that's like, yeah, you're right. This is a big issue. Let's work on it together. Then all of a sudden you're a team. You're a yeah. team and then you can meet and you're not just like wandering around randomly going, ah, look at that plastic trash. It's driving me crazy. But no, you and this other person can start meeting. And then once you start meeting, you can start thinking of things that you might do. So one thing you might start with is you might start with regular meetings. So you say, okay, well, let's meet every month or every other week. And it could even be just a phone call or you meet in person. And then you could start planning. And the kinds of things, what are, what are some things um, that you could think of? What is something that you could think of that you, let's say you start with two people, but maybe after other people started hearing it, let's say if you had five people, what is something you could think of maybe that you could plan that would get people interested and kind of excited about participating well um i don't know maybe well i don't know well i i remember um hearing that you guys sometimes do community cleanups oh yeah yeah at the so if that's something people are already kind of used to doing, yeah, maybe they already know, oh, community cleanup. Oh, I know what that is. So, you know, yeah. maybe that might be something that you could do. And um, at that community cleanup, that might be a chance for people to then join your group. And maybe you'd have some education, like some trivia about take some of those ideas that you presented in your, in your video and ask people to guess, 
you know, how much of plastic do you think ends up in the ocean or, um, did you, did you say that number in your video? Do you remember that? How much, yeah, I did. I said how much plastic enters the ocean each year. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was 8 million tons. Wow. <laughs> Wow. See, people don't know that stuff. And so, yeah, so let's say if you had a community cleanup and then you had some trivia contest, you know, like, hey, come to our table and try and answer these questions. So you'd be helping people understand the, the information that you already pulled together. And another thing that I love planning, Elena, is a Earth Day festival. So... Earth Day is on April 22nd. That's not too far, but it's not too close either. And that might be a day. What's cool about Earth Day festivals is you're excited about doing something about plastic. There's other people who are thinking about how to get more people on their bicycles and other people who are talking about solar power and everybody can come together and then teach each other. And it's a really, it changes that feeling from that kind of sad and angry feeling to a very hopeful and empowering, positive thing. It's like, oh, wow, you know how to fix bicycles? Oh, you know about solar? Hey, I know about plastic pollution. And then together, everybody can kind of rise yeah. up. And it, it, it gives it that. The, the other thing I think is so important about green teams is there's three things. You get together, you make a difference, and you feel better. And so right. by having a team, you get to feel better also rather than just like, ah, why is this problem here? Should, we should be able to do something. So you start doing something. And then you meet people that don't think you're crazy. They're like, Oh, I'm so, I love this. I love all the stuff that you're doing. So it makes you feel just kind of warm and cozy in the world <laughs> when you surround yourself by people that also care. Yeah. So, yeah. So do you have any, any other questions about starting a green team or do you have some enough ideas to maybe get going? I think I have enough ideas for now to start. Maybe Maybe we could check in with you like in a year or so and hear what's been going on. If you, if you decide to do a community cleanup or an Earth Day festival or maybe a summer, maybe I'm sure because your parents and you sometimes are performing at different places, maybe there's a, a festival or something that you could add uh, a table where you tell, teach people about plastics pollution you i'm sure you'll think of a million ideas once you once you and your teammate get going do you have any ideas off the top of your head of who you might invite to start working on it with you well um my best friend anias i know she's really concerned about the earth's problems too hmm. so yeah. Cool. So you guys could come up with a name for your team and yeah. maybe even a logo. And yeah, that's great. That's so cool. Well, good. I'm, I'm so excited that we had time to talk today and uh, can't wait to hear what all you do with your team. And thank you so much for all your research and just for caring about the planet. It's, it's so important. And I think, so Elena, one reason I wanted to talk with you is because I talk with a lot of adults who also feel kind of sad and angry and they see things and they don't know what to do. And I think that by your example, uh, when I tell them about the video that you made and they watch the video, they're going to be inspired. They're going to think, wow, if Elena can make a video, maybe I can make a video. So I, I really appreciate everything that you've done and it's going to make a big difference to help other people do something similar. All right. Any last thing that you want to say before we sign off? Well, just remembering 
just to remember always to help the earth because it can't get better on its own. That is so well said. I agree 100%. All right. So thanks so much, everybody, with the Green Team Academy for listening in today. That was Elena Magni joining us from St. John, from Coral Bay in St. John of the Virgin Islands. And remember, the time for action is now because there is no planet B. See you soon. my friend, are doing such important work. Caring about the planet and trying to figure out how to make an impact fast, you're exactly the kind of person that our world needs more of. To make sure that you're not wasting your precious time or energy, make sure you head over to greenteamacademy.com. Check out the expert trainings that are available and get your Green Team Essentials so you'll get the support you need. Thank you for everything you're doing, and I'll see you right back here next time on the Green Team Academy podcast. Mm -hmm.